Welcome to Top of the Hour, CUTV's morning show. Today, we'll be bringing you the latest in national and some sports news. I'm Brooke Whiteley. And I'm Cecilio Ramirez. The World Series has finally come to an end. We've got the results on the delayed game that finally wrapped up last night. We've also got the story of a young boy who ran away after getting his Xbox taken away. Since the holiday season is getting ready to begin, we like to remind everyone to drink responsibly. Too many people have lost their lives or taken the lives of others thanks to drunk driving. We will begin our show today by writing a quick PSA on drinking and driving. Stay tuned for Top of the Hour. Brad Lidge has led the Philadelphia Phillies to their first World Series championship since 1980. After leading the Series 3-1 in a suspended Game 5, the Phillies defeated the young Tampa Bay Devil Rays 4-3. Lidge was the hero picked up by the Houston Astros, or picked up from the Houston Astros, who closed out his perfect season to bring a title home to Philly. Brad Lidge went 48 for 48 on save chances this year, including two this week. He striked out pinch hitter Eric Hensk to end the game. Due to heavy rain and bitter cold weather, Game 5 was suspended in a tied sixth inning to finally be continued two days later. Fans booed Commissioner Bud Selig, who was criticized for postponing the game when he presented the MVP trophy to Cole Hamels. For Philadelphia, this World Series was more than just a win. It was a redemption for the 10,000-plus losses in the last 25 years. Congratulations to the 2008 World Series champs. A California newlywed man is dead after police mistakenly opened fire. Julian Alexander died after being shot twice in the chest by a police officer who was chasing four burglary suspects. California Police Chief says the officer ran into Alexander and mistook him for one of the four suspects and shot him. The officer's name hasn't been released, but he was a 10-year veteran of the department. The officer has been placed on paid leave pending an investigation. Software giant Microsoft is doubling the reward money for the whereabouts of a boy who ran away from his home in Ontario, Canada. 15-year-old Brandon Crisp disappeared on his bicycle after his father took away his Xbox game console. His father stated that he got rid of the Xbox after noticing changes in behavior since Brandon began playing Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare. Apparently, the teenager started skipping class, stealing money, and ignored his studies. A local newspaper and internet service provider and child fine offered $19,500 in U.S. currency. Microsoft doubled the offer hoping for a quick return. Police have found the missing boy's bike with a flat tire. The search continues as Brandon Crisp's dad says he just wants his son to come home. Convicted murderer Scott Peterson is writing the Florida woman Casey Anthony accused of killing her missing daughter. Sources say Peterson has been writing Anthony in the Orange County Jail. Anthony entered a not guilty plea to charges she did not kill her daughter. A spokesperson for Anthony's lawyer says she hasn't been responding to Peterson's letters. Jail officials say that no record of communication between Anthony and Peterson exists. 
They also say policy forbids Orange County inmates from writing each other, but there is no prohibition against writing or receiving mail from inmates from other correctional institutions. NBA basketball play just started and the Portland Trail Blazers are already regret regretting playing their number one overall pick in last year's draft. Center Greg Oden injured his foot in his first NBA appearance and will be sidelined for two to four weeks. An MRI confirms that Oden has a mid-lateral foot sprain. The Trail Blazers made the mistake of not pulling Oden out of the game sooner after noticing his limping and struggling in the very first quarter. When playing a team as good as the Los Angeles Lakers, the team shouldn't have, should have been smarter in making the choice of reserving the young phenom from play. Odin remained scoreless after missing four field goals and two free throws in 13 minutes of play. The seven-foot center is Portland's first number one draft pick since 1978. On to our only entertainment story on today's show. A vintage rock band's new release has become the second biggest debut album of 2008. ACDC's Black Ice albums enters the Billboard 200 at number one with sales of 784,000 in the first week. Remaining at number one is Lil Wayne's The Carter 3, which reached sales of over one million in its first week. The Walmart exclusive Black Ice becomes the biggest debut ever for an album only sold in one retail chain, and that's Wally World. Yes, ACDC's new album represents the biggest first week by a rock album since U2's How to Dismantle a Bomb, wow, which started with sales of 840,000 in November of 04. Yeah, this, that's, that's definitely an interesting topic to see a, a hard rock band breaking the mainstream like that. That's all the time for this edition of, top, of our Top of the Hour Morning Show. We'll be taking a short break next week for the premiere of our live election night coverage. Next Tuesday, tune in to any of the plasmas around campus for live updates on Obama and McCain's race to the presidency. Our coverage begins at 6. Make sure you also log in to YouTube.com and check out our In the Huddle Sports Show in a very special Halloween episode of the Film Geek Show. Just type in CU Internet TV with no spaces and you'll find all our CU TV programming. Also on our YouTube channel, you'll see the premiere of our first chapter of CU TV's telenovela, Pasión Universitaria. This novela is the first telenovela based on a college campus and the first to contain English subtitles. A gag reel of the first episode has also been posted on YouTube. Chapter 2 is already in the works and should be premiering in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for joining us again. Remember, you can catch us on campus at the top of the hour, every hour. I'm Brooke Whiteley. And I'm Cecilia Hermides. Have a very happy Halloween. Spring 1905, the President, Teddy Roosevelt, has come to Oklahoma Territory for a few days of what he thinks is fun, catching wolves with his bare hands. Brought to life by Dr. David Byland, you have the opportunity to hear Roosevelt's thoughts on citizenship, racism, character, and the Wild West. Following Dr. Byland's portrayal of Roosevelt, the film, The Wolf Hunt, will be screened. Filmed in Oklahoma in 1908, Roosevelt was pleased to show this film in the East Room of the White House early the next year. And for comparison and discussion, clips of the 2006 CU student production, Unbreakable, will also be seen. Plan on seeing, delighted, a conversation with Teddy Roosevelt, along with the historical film, The Wolf Hunt, and clips from the documentary, Unbreakable, Monday night, November 3rd, at the Shepler Center Ballroom. This Cameron University centennial event, sponsored by the School of Liberal Arts and the Communication Department, begins at 7 p.m. and is free to the public.